Saturday Night Theatre. I shall never forget Wainwright telling us about the ghost. The poor man refused to believe he hadn't killed someone. After all, he'd seen the figure quite clearly standing on the runway. And then after he'd run back to find him, there was nothing. No sign of a body. Only bloodstains. Everywhere. I think I was the only person in Montrose camp who understood a little of Wainwright's bewilderment... Because the previous night, I too had seen the ghost. It seems very strange to be writing all this now. After all, 27 years have elapsed since I first saw the ghost. But the events of the last few days have made me realise that I have to try to explain why it has again returned to haunt us. The Montrose Ghost by Martin Jenkins Based upon a short story of the same title by Harold Balfour, Lord Balfour of Inchry With John Pullen and Rosalind Shanks The Montrose Ghost The date today is July the 5th, 1942 but this extraordinary story begins one morning in the spring of 1915. After six hectic months over the other side of the German line, I'd been posted to the Royal Flying Corps Station in Montrose, Scotland, as a flying instructor. My nerves were in a bad way, and Montrose seemed an ideal spot to relax. See who it is, Flight. Sir. It's Mr. Adams, sir. What does he want? I'd like a private word, please, sir. Well, if it's personal, you should really speak to Major Holt, the station commander. I know, sir. Very well, you'd better come in, but only for a couple of minutes. Thank you, sir. Hang on outside, would you, Flight? Right, sir. Now, Adam, what is it? It's my wife, sir. I didn't even know you were married. We were married just after Hogmanay on the 4th of January. Oh. Belated congratulations. Now, what can I do to help? I'd like to ask for permission to live outside the camp, sir. Oh, I see. Well, to be quite honest, I'm not certain what the regulations are. I believe that married members of the flying staff are allowed outside. Ah, uh -huh, yes, but they're permanent staff. Now, I shall have to refer your request direct to Major Holt. Do you think he'll be understanding, sir? Well, I think uh, if you can live out, he'll give his permission. Thank you, sir. Where's your wife living now? With her parents. Is she from Montrose? We both are, sir. And you feel you'd like a little privacy? Since we've been married, we've only had one week when we've been completely alone. The rest of the time, I've either been at ground school or we've had to stay with her family. Right. I'll have a word with Major Hope this morning and let you know what he says after classes. Thank you very much, sir. By the way, how are you getting on with the training? Things improving a bit? I hope so, sir. Yes, so do I. The flight sergeant was telling me early this morning that he hopes to get you all airborne this week if the weather improves. I think I'll enjoy the actual flying, sir. Everybody always does. You just make sure you know exactly what you're doing. We don't want you crashing before you've had your fair crack at the hunt. No, sir. Right. Send flight sergeant Wood in, will you? Yes, sir. And thank you, sir. The captain wants you, flight. Very good, Mr. Adam. You wanted me, sir? Hmm. Shut the door, Frank. Sir. Did you know Adam was married? Yes, sir. Pretty girl. Not long on of nappies. 
Do you think it would be a good idea if Adam was to live outside camp? Well, he needs some incentive. At the moment, he's the worst of the bunch, and that's not saying much. Yeah. Well, I think it might be just what he needs. What he needs, sir, begging your pardon, is a firm kick up the backside. Perhaps what he really needs is to be told that he's no damn good. That wartime flying is not some fun and games exercise like hunting, shooting and fishing. How the hell are we supposed to tell men like Adam that they'll probably be shot down within two weeks of arriving in France? We don't, sir. We teach them how to survive. Can you seriously imagine Adam or Jackson or Campbell Smith lasting more than a week in the squadron? You've said yourself, sir, they've got to learn, then have a lot of luck. After all, we were probably just as bad when we started. Yes. Look, sir, it's none of my business, I know that, but why don't you have a night out this evening? Quite a few of the men are going into town to celebrate the possibility of our getting airborne tomorrow. I appreciate the thought flight, and I may well take you up on it. Now, I think I'd better pop along and have a word with Major Holt about young Adam. You hold the fort here. Sir? After two nights of quite heavy drinking in the mess, I decided to take the flight sergeant's advice and have a night on the town. When I arrived at the Stag Hotel... I had no notion of the horrifying events that were to start that night. Hello, Adam. Oh, good evening, sir. This is my wife, Sylvia. I'm very pleased to meet you, Captain. Rupert has told me a great deal about you. And it's a pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Adam, I assure you. I've hardly met any of Rupert's colleagues. He keeps you all very secret. <laughs> well, we have been very busy. In fact, this is my first visit into Montrose since I arrived. Can I get you a drink, sir? Well, I was just about to go. But I'd like a small whiskey, please, with water. Sylvia? The same, please, darling. If you'll excuse me, sir. Yes, of course. So you are training Rupert to fly, Captain. I think he's a very lucky man. I don't do the actual training, Mrs. Adam. Your husband has simply been posted to my flight. Oh. Oh, his instruction is in the hands of Flight Sergeant Wood. Oh, and I've heard a lot about him, too. Uh -huh. <laughs> Rupert seems positively terrified of him. Oh, flight Sergeant's had a very maligned race. <laughs> oh, Wood's an excellent man. Before the war, he used to be flying at Hendon. Your husband really is in very good hands. <laughs> but you are a flyer yourself. Yes. Well, the whole camp seems to be here tonight. And Rupert has spent the whole evening avoiding them. I think he's worried they might all descend on us. I can understand how he feels. I think he's the only married man in his group. Here we are. One large whiskey and water. Uh, one small one for you, darling. Aren't you having anything? I uh, didn't really fancy one just at the minute. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Honestly, you are so funny. Do you have to keep being so formal? Why can't you simply call each other Rupert and... Oh, I'm sorry, Captain. I don't know your first name. Desmond. There you are, Rupert and Desmond. Or is it not allowed? I certainly have no objection. Then you must call me Sylvia. The only thing I do insist is that we drop the Christian names back at the camp, on all occasions. Of course, sir. Uh, Desmond. Desmond. <laughs> now, I want to know all about your flying career, Desmond. Oh, it's not very outstanding. You're just being modest. Rupert tells me you were awarded the Military Cross. Yes, I was. You must be terribly proud. It's not all that remarkable. What did you have to do? Stay alive. That's what I keep trying to teach them. How to stay alive. How many planes did you actually shoot down? Oh, two or three, I think. Really? And is that why you got the MC? Partially. Did you feel excited? Excited? What do you mean, when I was awarded the MC? No. When you were up there, face to face with a German. Most of it is luck. After all, you only have a 50-50 chance. Then you must be very brave. No more than the Germans I shot down. You see, Mrs. Adam, it really is luck. Except in a few cases when you score a direct hit from behind. And then the other poor devil doesn't stand a chance. You just sit and watch him struggling to get out. Will you join us for dinner? N no, no, I, I really... Here. Rupert hasn't told you, has he? What? Anything? No, I don't think so. He wants so desperately to be a pilot. Yes, I know. But he's not very good, is he? Average. As good as you were at this stage. Sylvia, that's... Hard. As good as Camberley Smith. 
But tell me, Desmond, I I'm want to know. I'm not allowed to tell talk. me. Major Holt has given him a fortnight, and then he must take his solo. Has he been all right so far? Well, that's difficult to say. He hasn't done any solo flights yet. But he told me he'd done over eight hours solo. Isn't that true? Do you mean he hasn't even been up once on his own? I see. Isn't it stupid, but I didn't think he'd lied to me. I expect he meant to tell you the truth. No. How old are you, Desmond? Nearly 22. Why? So is Rupert. Yes, I know. His birthday is January the 4th, the day we were married. He lied to me then. Oh, oh, not openly, but he implied things. Sylvia, don't you think I should go? I won't get all tearful, I promise you. It's not that. Is it? Desmond, do you know what it's like living in a town where everybody knows your business? I'm afraid I was born in Croydon. We all kept very much to ourselves. People would say, so, you're marrying the Adam boy, are you? Then they'd smirk, not openly, but they knew I could see all right. I don't even think my father really approved. Look, I, I think you're upset. I'm not upset, Desmond. For God's sake, don't talk to me like a child. I'm sorry. That's just what Rupert says. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Till I'm sick of it. If only he'd stop apologising. Sylvia... Listen to me for a second. I've known that things weren't exactly 100% between you and Rupert. But I thought Rupert was worried about his flying. If there are other things and you think it could help Rupert, then I'll listen. I've become fond of you both and I want Rupert to succeed so that you can be happy. Does that make sense? Did you know Rupert's jealous of you? In God's name, why? The times we've danced together. The evening we went out before he came home. Oh, hundreds of little things. But Rupert idolises you. From a distance. I don't understand. Neither do I. To Rupert, I'm some kind of child to be loved at arm's length. When we were engaged, Rupert made a great point of saying that... He had already had some kind of experience. He was most anxious that I should believe him. He even told me the days it happened. But you see, it was all lies. And now, when Rupert sees us together, he sits and watches us. But then when he and I are alone, nothing. Nothing at all. Then perhaps you're imagining he's jealous. If he was, wouldn't he say something? Is that what you'd do? Yes. Why? Because you're a very beautiful and attractive woman. I don't believe Rupert would raise a finger to me even if I went to bed with another man. <laughs> That's a terrible thing to say. Is it? when I've been married for five months and he has never once... I don't believe you. You see, we both love each other. But Rupert cannot consummate our marriage. And since I met you, things have been even worse. Why? I told you that Rupert was jealous. Well, so am I. At night, I have longed for you to take Rupert's place. But you still love Rupert. Oh, yes tried to convince myself that in time he would grow more confident, but he hasn't. I need to know that I am capable of loving completely. But you must believe that one day he... One will... day? This year, next year, sometime. I don't think I could bear it if it never happened. No. So you see, Desmond... 
You don't even have to go to all the trouble of seducing me. I'm a very easy conquest. Happy? Very. And you? Yes. What's the matter? Hmm? You've been lying there staring into space. Rupert's coming out of hospital tomorrow. Yes, I know. Are you glad? Yes. You do realise that during the last three weeks I've fallen in love with you? I'm sorry. And now I don't want to lose you. But Rupert need never know. We can still see each other. No. I feel guilty enough as it is. I've betrayed Rupert. I've slept with you and... I hate the idea of you being with him. But he is my husband. Sylvia, can't you leave him? Please. No. But you still want us to keep meeting? We've had three wonderful weeks. Beautiful weeks. I don't want those to finish. You want to keep seeing me so that I can make up for Rupert's sexual inadequacies? Does that make you feel guilty too? It makes me feel sick. So what am I supposed to do? Love you from a distance, wait for you to phone me? Knowing that one day I shall be sent back overseas? I can't leave Rupert. Why not? You know why. Without me, Rupert would have nothing. He needs me. Did I mean anything to you? That's not fair. It damn well is. I don't love you, if that's what you mean. Then why the hell did you make me think you did? I enjoy being in bed with you. And from what I've heard, most men would be only too pleased to have a regular affair. Yes. Well, not me. But you've been with women before. You told me. Not like this. Now you're behaving exactly like Rupert. You're upset because you can't have your own way. The only thing I want is you. Well, I'm not free. Oh. Kiss me. I'm going. Desmond, don't. I mean it. But, but it's early. Yes. You're serious. Sylvia, you say you belong with Rupert. Then that means I mustn't see you. Don't you understand that I could end up destroying Rupert? That is why we must agree never to be alone together. So you're doing this for Rupert? For the past few weeks, I've tried to forget Rupert. I knew, of course, that he would get better, but I hope... What? I hoped you'd fall in love with me. But you knew that was impossible. I know now. Look at me. Tell me to my face that you will never try to see me alone again. Very well. Promise? I promise. Now, please go. It's for the best. If you say so. Perhaps Rupert will be different. Goodbye, Desmond. Goodbye. We kept our word. Rupert returned from the hospital. The three of us still met in public. But he didn't seem to have any inkling that anything had passed between us. Sylvia was possessive, motherly. She lavished affection on him. After four weeks of convalescence, Rupert resumed his training. But there was no improvement. Major Holt again issued an ultimatum. I know he's been ill. I know you think he'll improve, but the point is when? Give him another fortnight. And then what? Another month? He, he just needs confidence. Desmond, uh, we are not running a kindergarten. We're supposed to be training young pilots. Well, yesterday he did quite well. The flight was relatively pleased, and that's encouraging in itself. Very well. He can have two more days, and then he goes solo. And if I don't... He think... flies solo, or he's out. And if I don't think he's ready? Then send him straight to me. I see. Thank you, sir. Desmond. Yes, sir. It may be kinder to Adam in the end. 
To let him know he's a complete failure? To save his life. After all, he is married. Yes, sir. Don't let this become too much of a personal challenge, Desmond. Would you like me to transfer Adam to another group? No, sir. Thank you. Two days, then. I want a full report. Naturally, sir. For those two days, Wood and I devoted all our energies to getting Rupert into the right frame of mind. Looking back, we were quite encouraged. He seemed to have a new kind of determination. His concentration was better. And above all, he actually managed one dual flight without making a single major mistake. The night before his solo, I was drinking in the officer's mess when I was called to the telephone. Hello, Captain Little. Desmond, I must see you. Sylvia, you shouldn't telephone me here. Can you come immediately? Is Rupert there? He's gone to his mother's. We agreed. I not... have to see you. But I... Desmond, please don't argue. Just come. Why? I'll see you in half an hour. Bye. Thank you for coming, Desmond. What is all this? Do you want a drink? Sylvia, we agreed not to see each other. I meant what I said. But you're here. You sounded very upset. I'm pregnant. Are you sure? Confirmed this morning. And I suppose it couldn't possibly be Rupert's? No. Would you consider having it... removed? It's alive now, Desmond. That would be murder. Then you have to tell Rupert. Get a divorce and later we can get married. I've told you, I can't leave him. Things haven't improved? No. We had another failure last night. Rupert left this morning saying we must both learn to face the situation. He even suggested I might want a divorce on the grounds of his incapacity. Funny sort of annulment. I get a divorce because I'm still a virgin and seven months later I produce a baby. Sylvia, he can't make love to you. You're pregnant. He'll know it's not his child. Either you leave him or you stay. It's your decision. And if I can't decide... You must. It's not that simple. You either stay or you leave. And you want me to leave? Yes. I was sick this morning. Rupert was very concerned. He wanted me to see Dr. Fielding. Did you? I told you, he confirmed it. Would he say anything to Rupert? He might. I asked him not to. He seemed to find that very amusing. Keeping the happy event a secret for a little bit longer. Leave Rupert. Come with me. Please, Sylvia. Rupert would find a new life for himself. Especially after he's taken his first solo tomorrow. Tomorrow? Didn't he tell you? Will he be all right? If he keeps his head. And if not? Then we wouldn't allow him to fly. Would he crash? He might. Then he would never know. No. Look after him, Desmond. Passing that test means everything to him. If he fails, I don't know what he'd do. It's not that important. Isn't it? I think it's important to all of us. I I'll tell you tomorrow what I've decided. After Rupert has taken his solo. I'll phone you. Tell you what happened. I'll be waiting. Right. Oh. We'll find some way around it. Trust me. Yes, Desmond. I trust you. What the hell did you think you were doing? I'm sorry, sir. Sorry? How many times have we told you to watch your speed on the turn? I seem to get muddled. The arrest was quite reasonable, sir. If you'd stalled, you'd be dead now. I did manage to pull out of it. That's true, sir. He you did. shouldn't have got into it in the first place. I think perhaps I should give Mr. Adam one more spin. Take him through the whole thing once more. I'd be grateful, Flight. No. You go up straight away. Solo. But, sir... Now, Adam. If I might suggest, sir... Mr. It Adam be... will take off in five minutes, Flight Sergeant. Yes, sir. See, everything's ready. Sir? Desmond, for God's sake, I'm not ready. If you don't go so low now, Major Holt will have you out of the court. It really has to be today. Listen, Rupert. 
You're perfectly capable of flying that aircraft. You know you are. Ten minutes round and you'll have done it. I can't. You have no choice. And if I refuse? You have to fly that plane. Please, Desmond! For heaven's sake, aren't you man enough? No. No, if that's what you want me to say, no, I don't think I am. Just ten minutes. Keep your head, remember what you've been told, and you'll be perfectly all right. Believe me, Rupert. You'll do it? It can't be my decision, can it? Very well. I am ordering you to take your first solo flight now. Sylvia will be very proud of me if I succeed. Yes. Flight! Mr. Adam is ready now. Very good, sir. Now remember, keep a clear head and plenty of speed and you'll be fine. Stupid, isn't it? I've always wanted to be a pilot. But like so many other things, I never thought it would happen. Ready, sir. Just coming. I want you to pass, Rupert. And I know you can. Right then. Off you go. Contact. Contact. See you when I get down, sir. Yes, of course. So far, so good. Takeoff was quite smooth. He's holding steady. Four hundred feet. Good regulation height. Now the first turn. Round he comes. Whoops, a little bit slow. It's all right, though. He managed to put on some bank, all right. Is that young Adam? Yes, sir. I thought I'd better take a look. Of course, sir. He's just completed one length of the airfield, sir. He seems to be doing all right. I think he knows what has to be done. Although I did have to order him into the plane. Good God, what the hell? The silly young fool's letting that nose up again. Get him to watch his speed. Watch your speed. Your speed. It's getting worse. He'll stall. Rupert, for God's sake, get that nose down. Take control, will you, Flight Sergeant? Sir? He didn't feel a thing. He couldn't have, not in that. I've seen three enemy planes disintegrate, but always from the air. What you need's a stiff drink. No, sir, thank you. Rupert Adam was in my command. My duty is to be with him. You can't do anything. It's my duty. I shall want a full report, Desmond, first thing tomorrow. Did you know he actually wanted to be a pilot? Now, sir, if you'll excuse me. Hospitals are all the same. They smell of disinfectant. Rupert was cleaned up. What was left of him. And they allowed me to go in. His face was terribly lacerated. I remember standing by him. Talking to him. Asking him what I should do. But he was so still. A stillness that hurt me. Back at the camp, Major Holt told me that his wife had broken the news to Sylvia. After we had agreed on a time for the court of inquiry, he suggested that, as I was a friend of Rupert's, I should go and tell Sylvia what had happened. Yes? It's me. Sylvia, I'm... I'm sorry. They say you could hear the sound of the crash over a mile from the camp. The smoke was very black. I saw that quite distinctly. 
He didn't feel any pain. Mrs. Holt told me he would have died instantly. Yes. What happened? He stalled completely and... Why? Why? Why was Rupert flying at all? You knew he was too frightened. Oh, I don't think I should really talk about that. Why? Well, because there'll have to be questions asked later. No. Now. He took his solo because I ordered him to. Then you sent him to his death. If Rupert hadn't flown this morning, he would have had to leave the corps. You sent Rupert to his death. You killed him. Sylvia, that is nonsense. Dangerous nonsense. Dangerous? For who? If Rupert was ever to prove to himself that he could fly, then I had to order him into that plane. It was for his own good. His own good? Desmond, Rupert is dead. Because of his own negligence. The inquiry will confirm that. Don't you think your distinguished inquiry might be interested to hear that you are the father of my child and not Rupert? They could put two and two together. He crashed because of sheer careless flying. After you had ordered him into the plane. Why, Desmond, why? Did you think this could solve our little problem? Sylvia, that is a terrible accusation. But is it true? If you hadn't known I was pregnant, would you still have ordered Rupert to his death this morning? Oh, for God's sake! Would you? What exists between us had no bearing at all on my actions. Desmond, I don't believe you. You killed Rupert this morning. You deliberately sent him to his death, knowing that he would crash. That's not true. I swear to you, it's not true. You killed him so you could marry me. You saw that by getting rid of Rupert, you could have everything you wanted. He stalled and... You murdered Rupert in cold blood. Shut up! It is true, isn't it? Isn't it? I don't know. I don't know. Rupert was weak. You'd made love to me. I carry your child. Rupert would never have passed to be a pilot. You knew that. What could be easier? Please, Sylvia, be quiet. And if I refuse? Will you order me or kill me? Oh, everything you say is untrue. Well, do you think I could hurt you that much when I love you? Yes. What will happen to the child now? Do you mean Rupert's unborn son? But he's our child, yours and mine. No, Desmond, he's Rupert's son, Rupert's and mine. Oh, you can't... But doesn't it solve everything? You kill Rupert. Now, no one need ever know. Everyone will think that Rupert left a son. From today, he'll be an Adam. I shall bring him up here. So you see, Desmond, you need never have anything more to do with us. You made me promise I should never see you again. Now, I agree. But nothing that you've said is true. Perhaps Rupert knows the truth. But he's dead. His son is alive. And that is all that will matter to me for the rest of my life. Sylvia. Please go. That night, I was very drunk. They had to carry me to my quarters. I was undressed and put to bed. It was when I woke up that I first saw Rupert's ghost. <laughs> My head. Oh, God, what time is it? <gasps> what the devil do you want? Who are you? Oh, my God. Blood. Blood all over. Oh, God. Rupert. But you're dead. I saw you. Did you know he was my son? Rupert, listen to me. Rupert! He stood there. Here. Right beside the foot of the bed. Desmond, listen, you were very drunk. He was badly cut. The blood was running down his clothes onto the floor. You see there? Blood stains. 
It's blood, all right. And here's my handkerchief. You can see. I tried to wipe it up before I came to you. But the whole thing's preposterous. It was Rupert Adam. I swear it. But dash it, old man. Adam is dead. Yes. What the hell do we do? Nothing. Nothing? Is anyone going to believe I saw a ghost? Do you believe it? Oh, Desmond, how can I say? Ghosts, the supernatural, I, I just don't know. Then leave it. In a way, I'm sorry I panicked and involved you. I'm not sure that's what Rupert intended. Yes, well, come and see me first thing and... Oh, let me have that handkerchief. Yes, of course. My God, there's nothing on it. You sure? Well, you must have two. That's the handkerchief. But that's not possible. I saw that blood not two minutes ago. Look, sir, on the floor. The blood stains have gone as well. Sorry, sir. Begging your pardon. Yes, what I... is it, Flight Sergeant? It's Mr. Wainwright, sir. He's... Well, he's in a bad state of shock. I, I think I've killed someone, sir. Killed? I'd just touched down on the runway, and suddenly I saw him standing right in front of me. I tried to yell at him to get out of the way. I shouted and shouted. He just stood there. Just before I hit him, I saw that he was absolutely drenched in blood. Well, after I'd pulled up, I ran back to the spot and... There was no one there. Nothing at all. No sign except... Yes? Bloodstains. There, there were quite clear bloodstains. Where was this? About ten yards from where young Mr. Adam crashed. Well, that's the whole point. Just before I hit him, I saw his face. Yes? It was Adam, sir. The man on the runway was Adam. The devil am I supposed to tell Wing HQ? Excuse me, sir. Well, is there a body... No, sir. And the blood that Wainwright says he saw, well... Well, there's nothing there, no. My God. And I thought an officer's life was fairly uncomplicated. Why should Rupert want to return and terrify Wainwright? You tell me. I know why he wants me. Why? I sent him to his death. Desmond, that's nonsense. I ordered you to get him into the air on his own. In that case, we're both guilty. Excuse me, sir, but there are some pretty wild rumours starting to fly around. Shouldn't we take some sort of action? What do you advise? Stop all flying until we can clear this up. So you believe what Captain Little is saying? I don't disbelieve it, sir. Very well. I shall tell the adjutant to call a mass meeting of the entire camp in three hours' time. That's all, Flight Sergeant. Sir. Well, Desmond, I think we should pray that this, whatever it is, doesn't appear again. Prayer had never been a particularly strong point of mine. But I remember I tried. I felt an increasing sense of guilt that I was responsible for Rupert's reappearance. Why had he come? What was he trying to say? Even today, I cannot be too certain if I ever understood exactly what he intended. But when I awoke the next night and saw him again, I thought at the time he'd made it clear enough. You're quite sure about this, Desmond? I have put a formal application to you in writing. May I ask why? I believe the sooner I leave the camp, clear out of Montrose altogether, the quicker things will get back to normal. You can have my room sealed and locked for all time. In other words, if you go, the ghost will disappear. I don't believe he'll reappear. Not once I've gone. When is the court of inquiry? Tomorrow. As soon as it's over, I think I should leave. Very well. I just hope you're right. In the meantime, may I suggest we set up an intensive day of courses? Take the men's minds off the whole business? Yes, of course. Do you know, Desmond, just five minutes ago, the Padre phoned requesting permission to hold a special service of exorcism. It might help. I refused. I told the Padre it would only add fuel to the fire. He wasn't too pleased, threatened me with a higher authority. 
Damn it, Desmond, if I had agreed, it would have been tantamount to admitting the whole thing was official. You did see the bloodstains. Look, I'm not saying I don't believe you, but, well, I have to consider morale. If this thing really takes hold, there's no knowing where it'll end. Then the sooner I'm gone, the better. And if it doesn't stop, then... The Padre will hold his exorcism service, the army bigwigs will take over, and it'll be out of your hands. I'll make sure all your papers are in order and you can be away directly. The inquiry is over. I'd like to return straight to the front. Desmond. That's what I want, sir. Uh, you haven't got some stupid idea of getting yourself shot down by the first hun you see. It'd be a waste of a damn fine aircraft. <laughs> you won't get rid of me that easily. Well, that seems to be that. Will you tell Mrs. Adam yourself? May I leave that to you, sir? Oh, wouldn't she like to see you? After all, you were very friendly with the Adams. She's probably too upset for visitors. Poor girl. I suppose she'd be all right at the funeral. They can be very distressing. If that's all, sir. I'm sorry it had to end this way, Desmond. I wish you could have stayed. If you want this camp to return to normal, then I have to go. There's no other way. I was right. The camp did return to normal. I left straight after the inquiry recorded a verdict of accidental death while flying solo. And Rupert's ghost was never seen again. At least, not in Montrose. I was then certain Rupert had wanted me to leave Montrose. He had haunted the camp to force me to leave. Perhaps without me. Sylvia and the child would be his. In 1940, following a spell as air officer commanding the Battle of Britain Station at Tangmere, I was promoted to Air Vice Marshal and given command of Number 32 Group here at Benson in Oxfordshire. When I arrived here, all memories of Montrose had faded. Twenty-seven years had passed. However, One event, one conversation, was to bring the appalling business flooding back into my memory. It was exactly two days ago that the whole story started again. July the 3rd, 1942. You wanted me, sir? Oh, shut the door, Anne. I want you to hurry up those photographs that were taken yesterday. White Hall have been ringing emergency bells. Right, sir. Anything to sign? Just these. Oh. Oh, is that all? Well, there is a personal matter. I meant to tell you last night, but you'd already gone to bed. And you want to know if I have ten minutes to spare now? Yes, please. Request granted, flight officer. I don't quite know where to begin. Sounds ominous. It's not. At least I hope not. I want to get married. Anne? We were engaged last engaged? night. Engaged? Yes, at half past ten, in the bus station at Oxford. Oh, very romantic. <laughs> I wanted you to be the first to know. Well, I'm very pleased. And I know your father and mother would have been as well. Oh, Daddy would have played hell. He didn't approve of anyone getting married until they were at least 21. Which you are, in exactly one month. <laughs> Funny, it's been easy summoning up the courage to tell you. I think I should have been much more nervous of telling Daddy. Where did you meet this young man? Here, on the camp. Oh, you mean he's... He's a flight lieutenant in the PRU. Flies spits over Germany to get pictures. And I do know what PRU gets up to. At least I hope I do. That's the trouble of having a commanding officer as a godfather. He knows everything about everything. Not everything. How long have you known him? Three weeks, two days, and just over eight hours. And you're quite certain? Yes. When can I meet him? Tonight. I could ask him up to Air House before dinner. Fine. What's his name? Flight Lieutenant Adam. Adam? Yes. Do you know him? Huh? No, 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 I don't think so. Rupert was a bit nervous at the prospect of meeting you, but I told him... Desmond, what's the matter? It's nothing. Are you all right? 
Mm-hmm. Whatever's wrong? You're white as a sheet. Shall I get the M.O.? No, no, no. I, I, I shall be perfectly all right in a minute. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have bothered oh, you. No, no, nonsense. No, it's, it's a touch of giddiness. I, I get it occasionally when I'm tired. Look, forget about tonight. No, certainly not. Rupert can come over tomorrow. Tonight will be fine. I won't mind, honestly. And I'm perfectly all right. You bring him along tonight. Let me get the M.O. to have a quick look And at stop you. pestering, for heaven's sake. Sorry. So am I. You're very like Daddy, really. Why? He used to get cross with me, too. (laughs) Am I forgiven? Dear Desmond. (sniffs) When Mummy and Daddy were killed, everything I loved had gone. Now I have you and Rupert. You will like him, won't you? That sounds very like an order. I know you will. Bring him along at 6.15. And now, Flight Officer Douglas, back to work. Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, where does Rupert come from? Scotland somewhere, Montrose. His father was in the RFC, like you. But he was killed in some sort of accident. See you later. And, Desmond, thank you. Oh, my God. Nervous? I'd rather be somewhere else. He won't bite. And you have definitely told him? Yes. And he didn't mind? He was a bit surprised. In fact, he went quite pale. I thought you said he was pleased. He was stupid. I just chose a day when he was a bit off colour. Well, then shouldn't we skip tonight? He insisted on seeing you. He could hardly refuse after the glowing report I gave you. Happy? Yes. Is that all? Want me to prove it? Mm. Hey, but not now. <laughs> Time we made an appearance. Hey, wait a minute. What the hell do I call him? Godfather-in-law to be? He's my AOC. Why not, sir? Oh, very original. Honestly, he's very sweet. Since my parents were killed, he's done everything for me. Just forget he's our AOC and simply remember you're my fiancé. That should break the ice. Now, come on. There you are. Come in, come in. Well, you must be Rupert. I've already heard a great deal about you. Very pleased to meet you, sir. (laughs) Now, drinks. Anne, I know, will have sherry. Rupert? Uh, The same, please, sir. Uh, Despite the war, I do have several good Scotch whiskies. I prefer sherry. Thank Uh, you, sir. uh, And pass round the biscuits. Uh, Dinner will be later. You will both stay. Well, sir... We'd uh, love to. Good. Thought you might... So I've had everything set up for three. There, now. Two sherries. Oh, thank you, sir. I have told Rupert there's no need for him to stand to attention the whole time. I'm not. You haven't relaxed since we came in. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> well, look here, Rupert. I think we could be a little less formal, even within these hallowed walls. How about Desmond? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, right. Desmond. Mm. Ten out of ten for initiative. You didn't know you had such a fearsome reputation, did you? A good AOC knows everything. (laughs) Now, Rupert, uh, tell me something about yourself. Well, sir, I'm Scots. Uh, I was born in a little town called Montrose. Do you know it? Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, I was stationed there once. Oh, really, sir? When? Oh, years ago. Anne tells me your father was killed, I'm sorry. In a flying accident. It happened before Rupert was born. He never even knew his father. I'm not sure which is worse. It's funny, he never really was my father. He was just a series of photographs. Someone my mother and grandmother used to talk about. So, in a sense, he was a complete stranger to me. Does your mother still live in Montrose? Oh, no, no, she's in London. We came south in 1938 after I got my A licence. Rupert's very anxious for you to meet her. Yes. Yes, of course. When could you, Desmond? Well, actually, she's, um... She's coming up to Oxford tomorrow to meet Anne. Uh, Would tomorrow evening be convenient? You've no other engagements. (laughs) That's one advantage of having a goddaughter as secretary. She knows everything I'm doing. (laughs) Yes, of course, it would be ideal. Would your mother care to come for dinner? I think she'd be delighted. Rupert will find out definitely and let me know. (laughs) And then you, no doubt, will tell me. (laughs) Do you know how your father was killed? Yes, he crashed from 400 feet. Uh, Died instantly. Apparently, he'd been ill, and my mother always maintains he wasn't really fit. It was his first solo flight. Tell Desmond about the ghost. Ah, no, that's just superstition. Local tittle-tattle. Ghost? Aye, stupid rumour. 
Well, apparently after my father was killed, local people claimed my father had been seen as a ghost by some of the men at the camp. If you go up to Montrose today, there'll be some old drunk who'll tell you about the ghosty. And what's odd, Rupert's mother will never talk about it. She flatly refuses to tell Rupert anything. You see, sir, I have exactly the same name as my father, and ever since I was a little lad, my mother's one ambition was for me to be a flyer. She used to take me up to the camp to watch the planes and tell me, one day you'll fly one of those. And now here I am. Thank heaven. Personally, I don't believe in the supernatural. <laughs> Now, I think dinner should be just about ready. And uh, nip out and tell Edward he can serve. Well, come on, Rupert. I'll show you through to the dining room. Oh, right, sir. Thank you. Right, Desmond. How many more times? Sometimes I despair of any normal home life ever again. I had dreaded meeting my son. Would he resemble me? Would either of them notice the similarity? I needn't have worried. Rupert had his mother's features... The same chestnut-coloured hair. The deep, intense blue eyes. He talked so openly about his father, the father he had never known, the father he presumed to have died in an air crash. And now I had agreed, for Anne's sake, to meet Sylvia. But I knew it could be disastrous. Very early next morning, I ordered a car and was driven up to London, ostensibly on urgent business. In fact, I told the driver to take me to Eaton Square. I had obtained Sylvia's address from Rupert's file. Well, Desmond, I can't say I'm pleased to see you. I must apologise for contacting you suddenly, out of the blue. It's been a long time. But I felt it was most important... You're older, greyer. You're still a very beautiful woman. I don't think you called to pay me compliments. What do you want, Desmond? Do you know which group Rupert is in? Of course, number 32 at Benson. And do you know who his AOC is? You? Yes. It was quite a shock to me as well, to be suddenly introduced to my own son. Rupert is my son. His father is dead. He is also my son. No, Desmond, I kept my promise. I swore that I would bring him up as Rupert's son. <laughs> and I said I would never see you again. I had also intended to keep my word. But yesterday, my goddaughter, Anne, came to see me. She told me she wanted to get married. To Rupert. Anne is your goddaughter? Yes. Her mother was killed in an air raid, and then... Last year, her father was lost at sea. I had no idea. She's like a daughter to me. So, you see, I wouldn't want her to be hurt. Does Rupert know you are Anne's godfather? Of course. I met them both last night for dinner. You didn't tell Rupert who you were. Sylvia, I'm not that stupid. It's quite obvious that we, we cannot agree to the marriage, for both their sakes. In God's name, why? You can ask me that. I want Rupert to have nothing to do with you. I told you that before he was born. Now you say your goddaughter wants to marry him. I could never allow that. Anne has no blood ties to I me. have told you what I want. Now, Desmond, I think you should go. I've no wish to prolong this discussion. What will you tell Rupert? That is none of your business. Oh, but I think it is. If those two youngsters love each other, what possible right have you to prevent their marriage? I am Rupert's mother. He will listen to me. Well, well, what are you trying to protect him from? Well, are you still going to allow something that happened all those years ago to ruin their future? I want to safeguard Rupert's future. And that means forbidding his marriage to Anne? If necessary, yes. What are you so frightened of? Myself. I'm frightened of what I know. I don't understand. Frightened of what can happen if you love someone too much. You mean Rupert? No, Desmond, I mean you. Me? All that time at Montrose, it was you I loved, you I wanted to be with. But you... I know I sent you away. Because you loved Rupert? Because I knew... I had, in some measure, caused his death. 
After all, if he died, I could be free with you. Then that awful afternoon when they told me he'd been killed, and then later when you told me you'd been forced to order him into the air, it had all come true. We could be together. But I knew I should never be able to live with the belief that I had in some way made you order Rupert to fly that day. You should have told me. The only thing I could think of was the baby. He had to be protected. He must never know what I had done. Above all, he must be proud of his dead father. I resolved that I should never see you again. I hated myself so much that it was not difficult to hate you as well. And now you think I could harm Rupert again? We both could. But he's so unlike... So unlike Rupert. He's confident, proud... Just like his real father. You mean you have told him who I am? No, I wanted him to grow up like you. I wanted him to be a young Desmond Little. The only difference would be that he'd believe his father was called Rupert Adam. And you're proud of him? He's everything I could have wished. I don't want that spoilt, Desmond. And you think if he marries Anne, things will change? It would bring us together again. There is always the possibility that one or other of them would learn the truth. Then let us meet deliberately, but as perfect strangers. Let them see us together. Then, once the wedding arrangements have been settled, we only need meet very infrequently. It frightens me. There's been so much unhappiness, I don't want either of them to suffer for what we did in the past. Oh, they need never know. It's Rupert and Anne who are important now. You can't just end their engagement without any explanation. Well, have you thought how Rupert would feel if you did? You could end up losing him. Yes, I know. So you think we should all meet? Well, Rupert told me you were coming up to Oxford later today to meet Anne. I'll ask you all back to Air House for dinner. Nothing could be simpler. Desmond, you left Montrose against your will because I wanted you to. I shall come to Air House tomorrow knowing in my heart that it's wrong. It's not wrong. In no way can it but be But I shall come because you want me to. I only hope you don't end up hating me. I could never do that. That's what I believed once. That's what Anne and Rupert believe now. Do you still... Could you still love me? After all these years, what a wonderful, arrogant question. It could never be that simple, Desmond. When you walked through the door ten minutes ago, you were a stranger. Oh, perhaps it is possible to love a stranger who reminds you very strongly of someone you once knew. But the Desmond Little I knew left me with a baby son. I loved him and I hated him. I loved him so much that I sacrificed my life for his child. And I hated him because he never allowed me any life of my own. It will take me time to accept the man you have become. Sylvia... Please don't ask me any more. I think we've both said enough for this afternoon. For the sake of Rupert, and because I understand a little bit how you feel for Anne, I shall come tonight. Now, Desmond, I, I, I want to write some letters, so yeah, if you yes, will excuse yes, me. Yes, of course. I am looking forward to meeting Anne. Really. I am. All the way back to Benson, I was too amazed to think clearly. I had left Montrose because I thought Sylvia blamed me for Rupert's death. Now she had told me that she felt guilty herself. Suddenly I thought of Rupert Adams' ghost... And when I returned to Benson and found myself plunged into a terrifying personal dilemma, I knew that Rupert's ghost was still affecting our lives. He was, in fact, demanding some kind of sinister revenge. A revenge which I would ultimately have no chance of avoiding. Any messages? Captain Roberts and Wing Commander Buckler waiting to see you. Uh, what is it, Jack? 
May we have a word in private, sir? Yes, of course. Go in my office. I won't be a second. Right, sir. And any news about this evening? Yes, Rupert just called. His mother will be delighted to come for dinner. Good. We'll see if you can rustle up some tea in about 20 minutes. I'm parched. Right. Oh, sit down, gentlemen. <clears throat> well, Jack? Top secret coded signal from command. Eministry want us to lay on a special photo reconnaissance flight first thing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. What's the target? Intelligence have been receiving reports that the Germans are opening some kind of secret weapons factory here. Just south of Rotterdam. And they want us to supply the photographs? Yes, and, uh, and a little more. Such as? After the pilot has taken his high-altitude shots, he's to fly down for a complete low-altitude coverage as well. Like hell they do. Buckle's quite right, sir. But that's virtually suicide. The poor bastard won't stand unearthly. Oh, they've thought of that, sir. He's also to break radio silence and give a full verbal description of everything he sees. And that'll make him an easy prey for every 109 and Fockable from the target to the coast. Must be damned important. Oh, is that all? The signal finishes by saying it's a direct cabinet order issued via the chief of the air staff's office. Doesn't exactly leave us much room to manoeuvre. Right, what steps have you taken so far? I've got Group Captain Banks preparing a first draft of operational orders. Good. Well, gentlemen, who do we send? Uh, the Wing Commander's prepared a short list, sir. First, sir, I think I should volunteer to go myself. You know that's not possible, Harry. I need you here. Then I have three names, sir. All flight lieutenants, all with adequate mission experience, all good men. I'm sorry, sir, but it does seem one hell of a risk. Are you going to tell them what's involved? It's no more risky than any photographic flight, that's all we say. Except we warn him to be extra careful. But he won't stand a chance. Easy on, Harry. Look, Harry, it's ours not to reason why. We've been ordered to undertake a particular mission. To air staff intelligence, it's important. They probably know the appalling risks just as well as we do. But they also know the vital value of anything we could get them by film and by word. Who are the three men? Blades, Sidney and Adam, sir. Blades, Sidney and... Adam, sir, Rupert Adam. And who do you recommend, Harry? Well, sir, Blades has the most experience, but he's fagged out after his last two missions. Also, he's married, sir, with two kids. So is Frank Sidney. In any case, he'd be my last choice. Why? Well, nothing too tangible. Has turned back once or twice, ostensibly mechanical failure, possible suggestion of LMF. We couldn't risk anyone on this, even with a suspicion of cowardice. You're absolutely sure? No, no sir, but it's a strong doubt. What about Adam? Efficient, popular, good pilot, and he's single. So it's between Blades and Adam. Who do you recommend? With respect, sir, for something like this, I'd rather leave the final choice to you. Jack, make sure Banks has everything sewn up in a couple of hours. I want to go through the whole operation with you. Sir. And Wing Commander, will you inform Flight Lieutenant Adam that he is required to report for a special mission, codenamed Silent Panther, at 0800 hours tomorrow? Yes, sir. Perhaps if he pulls out every stop on the Merlin, he may be able to corkscrew upwards and outclimb the enemy. That's possible. Mm, everything's possible, Harry. Don't write him off yet. No, sir. Sorry, sir. We must give Adam no inkling of the odds against him. Quite the opposite. He must believe he can succeed. And then, with luck, he might make it back. Right. That's all, gentlemen. Thank you. For fully five minutes after the men had left, I could hardly believe what had happened. On my direct order, another Rupert Adam was flying to almost certain death. Then I remembered Sylvia was expected for dinner. I would have to sit with her, with Rupert, with Anne. Was this Rupert's revenge? I dreaded our evening meeting. At first, it seemed to go quite smoothly. But suddenly, after the meal, Sylvia told the two youngsters she wanted to talk to me. Desmond, what is this mission Rupert is going on? It's routine. Anne seemed very worried, very uneasy. There's nothing to worry about. Rupert has to get some photographs of a top-secret enemy establishment. And that is routine? For us, yes. Rupert refuses to say anything at all. He's only obeying his orders. Whose orders? Yours? Indirectly, yes. Why is Rupert going? Why? Because he's the best man for the job. The best man? Of all the men under your command, you had to choose Rupert. It was my duty. Sylvia, there really is nothing to concern yourself about. Just before we set out from my hotel, Anne confided in me that she was desperately worried. 
She'd heard two of your officers say the young bastard doesn't stand much chance. Then half an hour later she has a call from Rupert saying he's going on a secret mission. Well, she's put two and two together. Rupert had no right to say anything if to her. If anything happens to Rupert, I shall hold you personally responsible. Sylvia, the boy wants to go. I know that. He'd go if everything was against him. It's all in the line of duty, isn't that what you say? Sylvia, you must believe I have no power to stop Rupert going. Has he any chance of returning? Of course. I love Rupert more than anything in the world. If he dies, I will turn Anne against you. You asked me this morning if I still loved you. I hate you, Desmond. You asked me as a stranger, but now you are not a stranger. You're the same man who came to see me after you sent my husband to his death. I hated you then. Now you're sending my son to his death. Again, I'm powerless to stop you because Rupert wouldn't listen to me. He's too proud, just like his father. Sylvia, if I could prevent this, Anne I would. Anne and I will make it our duty to hate you for the rest of our lives. I think I should be getting back, Mother. The Air Vice Marshal and I have finished. Well, good night, Rupert. I shall see you first thing in the morning. Try to sleep well. Oh, I shall, sir. No fears on that score. You'll see Mrs. Adam to the door, eh? Right. Good night, sir. And thank you for a lovely evening. You and I will be seeing a great deal more of each other, Anne. I certainly hope so. Oh, my God. Oh, damn. The lights have gone. Must be a fuse. Now, where the... Is... Is that you, Rupert? Yes. I half expected I might see you. For God's sake, tell me what you want. Is that it? I see. Is that what you want? I am right. It is what you want me to do. Desmond, are you all right? Hmm? What? You were talking to yourself. Oh, the, the light's fused. They're perfectly all right now. Everything went black. You're tired. Are you worried about tomorrow? I was. Is it going to be dangerous for Rupert? It could be. Where's he going? It's a secret mission. We're both wrong to talk about it. But Desmond, I've been sick with worry all day, ever since I heard Jack Roberts say Rupert hadn't much chance. Listen, Anne. You're the only person in the world who matters to me. Have I ever lied to you before? No. Then go to bed and don't worry. Rupert will do whatever is necessary, and whatever his orders are, he'll obey them, and we'll be proud of him. All right? I don't understand you tonight. Don't try. Go to bed. Sleep. And in the morning, pray that Rupert's mission will be successful. Now I must write some letters. In fact, I have one long letter. Off you go now. See you in the morning. Night, Desmond. I pray you will be happy, darling Anne. Oh, good morning, sir. Ah, all ready? Yes, sir, I think so. Good. You're early. No, I just wanted to check everything. You've eaten? Yes, sir. Well, I'm glad I've seen you. I wanted to have a quick word. Unfortunately, I have to go up to Scotland in about 45 minutes. Oh. Last minute emergency. Group Captain Roberts will be in command here. Oh, fine. You're to take no unnecessary risks, Rupert. We don't want any heroics. I'll take care. Get your high altitude coverage, and then make one swoop for your verbal report. At the first sign of trouble, out. Don't worry, sir. I will. The Hudson will be stationed halfway across to pick up your RT. Right. Oh, Anne and I look forward to hearing all about it this evening. The signal officer says we can expect some action in a couple of minutes, sir. Right. Board C just reporting. They expect Silent Panther to break silence in about 90 seconds. They say there could be interference. Weather poor, low cloud. Switch on the amplifier, Harry. Right, sir. Hudson in position, sir. Escort. Group 12 in position, sir. Come on, come on. Harry. Sir. 
Harry, did you know young Adam and Anne Douglas were virtually engaged? Engaged? Yes. Who told you? She did, just now. Poor kid. Does she know what about all this? Apparently, she overheard us talking yesterday. She's in a bad state. I just left her in floods of tears. Why the hell couldn't AOC have stayed with her? Damn it all, he must have known. I'm sure he would have, if it had been at all possible. If I'd known, I'd never recommended him. That's nonsense, Harry, and you know it. We all agreed Adam was the best man for the job. Oh, 902 hours. Board seated report signal imminent, sir. That's him, sir. Can't you improve the signal? I'm trying, sir. Come on, lad. Cut the nut ring. And over target. Port complex covers about six acres. Not much activity. Worms. Heavy flag all round. Several large transports parked on the perimeter. All flag. Still in active. Nothing much so far. We should start climbing out now. This could be what we need. Hello? Hello? Shed doors open. Rockets. Repeat. Rockets. Scores of the beggars. Packed inside. Tell the PM they're like giant cigars. Like big price. Try to get low altitude photographs. Intelligence were right there at once. Emergency boost. This woman. I'm not in. Get. Engine on fire. Won't make it. Goodbye, everybody. You've got all the jam. I've had it. Come on, son. Time? Oh, 904, sir. Signal bomber command. We want that bloody place blasted off the face of the earth. Board C coming through, sir. Well? They report all contact lost with Silent Panther. Repeat, contact lost. Pilot presumed shot down. Full verbal description being immediately relayed to CAS Hudson and uh, Group 12 returning to base. End of signal, sir. Why the hell did he do that last low-level swoop? If he'd climbed out as soon as he saw the rockets, he'd have been OK. What he could have told us would have been invaluable. How do we tell Anne Douglas? We should leave it to AOC. When's he due back? He left a message saying he'd be back late morning. Ask her to come to my office in five minutes, Harry. Right. What the hell do I say to her? My God, poor kid. Come. Ah, come in, Anne. Sit down. He's dead, isn't he? His plane has been shot down, but there's always a chance he may have bailed out. Why did he go? You said Anne, he didn't please. have a chance. Why? Why couldn't Desmond have sent someone else? He had to send the best man for the job. You know that. <laughs> Oh, Jack, I knew what was going to happen. I knew. <laughs> Let's get you home. No. No, I don't want to go home. I want to stay here. It'd be better. Besides, I've just phoned Rupert's mother. She's coming straight up from Oxford. Did you tell her? No. I just said I felt she should come here. That's all. Nothing else. I don't think you she should. She is Rupert's mother. I'm sorry. It's not your fault. It's nobody's fault, Anne. No? I'll warn the gate that Mrs. Adam's coming. Did Desmond know Rupert would be killed? Anne, I can't answer that. You know I can't. We all knew the risks involved. We all agreed who should be sent. There was no alternative. No alternative. 
When is AOC due to return? He should be back when Mrs. Adam arrives. Good. Well, if you're sure you're all right on your own... I won't do anything stupid. Right. Then you stay here till Mrs. Adam arrives, and then we'll go to the AOC's office. You're sure I'm you're... all right, really. I'm sorry, Anne. Very sorry. He was a fine young man. And you helped to kill him. Goodbye, Anne. I thought it best if you waited in here, Mrs. Adam. We're expecting the Air Vice Marshal back at any minute. Thank you. Everyone here is very proud of your son. Please, Captain, I should rather we simply accepted the fact that my son is dead. It will save us all further embarrassment. Mrs. Adam, I know how distressed you must be, but Rupert did manage to obtain vital information. Are you trying to tell me that my son died honourably? Yes, I am. I see. Well, Captain, I find it hard to distinguish between dying honourably and murder. Anne has told me that Rupert stood no chance of returning alive. Is that true? Is it, Jack? Mrs. Adam, you can't expect me to answer a question like that. Your son was simply doing his duty. On whose orders? He was selected because Who I... Who issued the direct order to my son? The AOC, naturally. And I shall ask him if Rupert was murdered. Mrs. Adam, I really murdered, do think you Murdered, Captain. Sent to his death... Oh, I know how proud and honourable you all are. I know how you'll pin a medal on him and then expect Anne and me to spend the rest of our lives honouring his memory whilst you forget all about him. Well, I'm not going to let that happen. Not again. This time, Desmond Little is going to answer... For... My God! Hello. Dead? For heaven's sake, what is all this? Mum, what are you doing here? Oh, Rupert. Rupert, I thought you were dead. They all said you were dead. Who said? We heard it. Every word. <laughs> Look, just a minute. Will someone please explain what the hell's going on? Anne? How did you do it? Do what? Sir, what is all this? Less than an hour ago, we heard Silent Panther shot down in flames. Bordsy reported half an hour later. No survivor. Silent Panther? How did you get away? But I don't understand. Silent Panther was cancelled. Cancelled like hell it was. You mean... Oh, my God. You thought I was dead. You thought I'd been shot down. Well, no wonder you looked as if you'd seen a ghost. But if you weren't in Silent Panther, who was? Well, AOC told me quite distinctly it had been cancelled, scrubbed at the last minute. When was this? Oh, about uh, 15 minutes before takeoff. Yes, I, I just had my final briefing with Flight Lieutenant Buckle. I was on my way to the apron when AOC stopped me and said it was all off. Then if you haven't been in Silent Panther, where have you been? To Resyth. What? Resyth? Yes. Um, he said SNO Resyth wanted some aerial photos and would I buzz off and get them? In fact, he'd been going himself, but when Silent Panther was scratched, he asked me to go instead. And that's where you've been? Yes. What code did you use? Beta minus. I see. Look, sir, what does this all mean? Beta minus was AOC's code signal for his emergency trip to Scotland. What plane did you fly? The standby spit. He said as Silent Panther had been cancelled, we should... And you took off at 7.48 in beta minus? Yes. Oh, then... Who was in Silent Panther? It was Desmond, wasn't it? There's no other explanation. But it doesn't make sense. I mean, why should he want... Why should he want to risk his life on a hopeless mission? Why did you, Rupert? It wasn't hopeless. There was always a 50-50 chance. No, Rupert, there was very little at all. They didn't tell you that. Yes, uh, Well, even so, it had to be done. We had to find out if there was a rocket base there. And if there was, then it had to be destroyed. I knew that. I knew the risks. Does it matter why? He must have had his reasons. Yes, he did. Perhaps he felt it was right for him to go. Right? He was the AOC. Exactly. But it doesn't make sense. I think it does. He acted out of a sense of duty and personal honour. He knew what he had to do. Maybe, but why? He would have had his reasons. There's a letter here on his desk. It's for you, Mrs. Adam. Uh, thank you. 
Well, if you would excuse me, there's quite a lot of telephoning I have to do. Oh, of course. Rupert, take Anne for a drink. But yes. please do as I ask. You'll join us in a minute. Uh, yes. You're safe now, Rupert, and that's all that matters. Your happiness and Anne's. Now off you go. Come on, Anne. I expect you could use a drink. As I don't know who will be reading this, I am addressing it to you, Sylvia. And you will have to decide whether Anne and Rupert should be told the truth. I, I had to, to write this because, because it is necessary, necessary for me to, to try to, to get, get everything clear in my, in my own mind before I finally carry out Rupert's last instructions. So here goes. I shall never forget Wainwright telling us about the ghost of Rupert Adam. The poor man refused to believe he hadn't killed someone. So when I saw Rupert's ghost again tonight, I knew he wanted me to fly Silent Panther tomorrow. In any case, I'm not even sure that I hadn't already decided that is what I should do. I still don't know exactly why Rupert returned. Did he want revenge? My death for his. Did he want to save our son's life? Did he want to prevent me seeing you again? Perhaps it was a combination of all these. Well, Sylvia, that's it. When you read this, I shall be dead. And you will have to decide what to say to Rupert and Anne. Will you tell them the truth or not? Will you tell Rupert I am his real father? There have already been too many lies, Desmond. But what else can I do? I shall tell them you simply wanted them both to be happy. Now Rupert's spirit can leave us in peace. I pray, Desmond, for all our sakes, that he will. In The Montrose Ghost, the cast was as follows. Desmond Little, John Pullen. Sylvia, Rosalind Shanks. Lieutenant Adam, Christopher Neem. Flight Sergeant Wood, Douglas Blackwell. Major Holt, Patrick Barr. Rupert, Christopher Bidmead. Flight Officer Anne Douglas, Jane Knowles. Group Captain Roberts, David Graham. Wing Commander Buckle, David Neal, and Lieutenant Wainwright and Signals Officer, Sean Probert. The Montrose Ghost was written by Martin Jenkins and based upon a short story of the same title by Harold Balfour, Lord Balfour of Inchrye. The play was produced and directed by Jerry Jones. <laughs>